setting new standards in podcast excellence. You have joined the WBT, fully focused on business and taxes. Here is your host, Michael Lodge. And welcome to the WBT. This is Mike Lodge. Glad you've joined me. It's a bright Tuesday morning here in Palm Beach. I'm always happy to know that you've joined me and we're talking together today. What is today? Today's Tuesday. So it's Political Tuesday. This is when I rant and rave and stomp on the desk and pound on the desk. I mean, jump up and down. <laughs> So that's what we're going to talk about, but we're not going to talk really about politics. We're going to talk about um, the process of politics and everything else that's happening this week, because this is a vital week, and lots of things are happening, so we need to take a look at that. I'll be right back. This is brought to you by Lodge Co., a business and tax advisory firm where your success is our goal. Call us today toll-free at 888-681-1518. Or visit us at www.lodge-co.com and learn more about what we can do for you. Lodge & Co., your source for sound business and tax services. Gosh, I don't know what happens to these weekends, but they go zooming by, right? Especially when you have Veterans Day and you have a three-day weekend, it kind of mixes you up. So today's Tuesday, but really it feels like Monday. (laughs) Listen, we have a lot of things happening this week, especially in Congress. We have this impeachment hearing starting tomorrow with open sessions. It's going to be very interesting because some of the individuals that they're calling back and are going to be under cross-examine, I don't think are going to hold up. I don't think they're going to hold up in the cross-examine by the Republicans because... There's just too much of hearsay testimony. I heard this person say this. I heard that person say that. Unfortunately, in the legal system, hearsay is just not acceptable. It just isn't. In fact, one of them that they're having a problem with right now, in fact, there is a great piece, and I very seldom listen to the San Francisco Chronicle because they're so far left. But they really did a very good analysis. And in the name of the article, I want you to go to the San Francisco Examiner or Google it. And it's called Analysis. Democrats have a Colonel Vidman problem. And the problem is, is that a lot of the things that he has said is hearsay. Well, I heard this person say that. I heard this person say that. The other issue is that he told people about his what he heard or what he didn't hear on the convers- on the conversation with Trump and the president of the Ukraine. And then he told his brother. <laughs> so there's some problems here because he's in the national security. So what he hears and, and sees is supposed to be highly confidential. So he, he already has a problem there. Go and read that. Go ahead and read that article. I mean, it is for a far-left paper to be doing that, to be writing that. It's really amazing because it really goes line by line of what happened with this testimony and why the Democrats have problems. So you have that already because remember that he is one of the key witnesses of, of the Democrats. And they already have problems with him. I think that as you... The, the problem that I see is that when you talk to individuals out there who are anti-Trump, what they do is they really are spinning mostly what the what the uh, Democrats are saying. It's a spin. It's a spin over and over and over again. And they can't get past this point. If you are talking about impeachment, you know what they bring up? They will bring up his tax returns and how he's being audited and how evil that is. Listen, guys, don't be so stupid. Have some common sense in your arguments. An audit is just an audit. There's nothing criminal about it. 
The IRS comes and say, listen, we want to look at your 2014 tax return. And by the way, the IRS has the ability to look at the year before 2014, and they have the ability to look at 2015. And they can open up those years. So you can have three reviews or audits going on at the same time. That's just how it works. It's not criminal. It's just that the Internal Revenue Service wants to look at what you've stated your income and your expenses are. They want to verify it and make sure that it's been reported correctly. Now, they will make adjustments or they will disallow some of those expenses. And then they bring up his foundation. I don't care about his foundation. It's done with. It's over with. Listen, if you were to look at how many foundations lose their status, it is mind-boggling because of various reporting issues that foundations have because they don't understand what foundations and, and charitable organizations are about. They think it's a way to put money in there, get all this money for free, and then take money out and use it for themselves. I've seen this happen, and I've seen foundations and charitable organiza- organizations shut down because of that very fact. And then they bring up his university and how it was never a university. Listen, you guys, there are so many companies and businesses out there who are selling you something. And they name their product XYZ University. Go out there and look at all of these companies out there selling you sales programs and real estate programs. And they say it's XYZ University, but they're not a university. It's a commonplace thing out there. In, in, in Trump's case, it was a civil case. It wasn't a criminal case. It was civil. <laughs> but they want to make everything that Trump does a criminal case. So you have all of these individuals who are spinning, but they don't understand how the rules and the laws actually work when it comes to that. So I'm, I'm assuming that if they were to ever get audited, are they a criminal at that point? If Joe Schmo down the street from me gets audited and he's a liberal, is, is he a criminal then? So you've got to use some common sense. If you're going to make some arguments, liberals, use some common sense on what you're saying. If you don't know the issues, if you don't know the legal issues that surround this impeachment and the Constitution and the rights to have counsel and the rights to be represented and the rights to to cross-examine your accuser, don't make, the, don't make any arguments because you are going to lose it every single time. Common sense wins out every single time when you're making an argument. But if you're just going to spin something, it's not going to get you anywhere. The same thing with Republicans. If you're just going to spin what the Republicans are going to say, you're not going to get anywhere either. Know your facts. What were we talking about? Oh, yes. <laughs> Go and read this article. It's called Analysis. Democrats have a Colonel Vidman problem. And it's from the, it's from the um, San Francisco Chronicle, which is a far-left uh, liberal paper up there, but they actually did a very good article about this and how the Democrats are going to have a big problem. You know, one of his issues, one of Vidman's issues is that he gave his opinion. Unfortunately, opinions is not a matter of law. What did you actually hear? What did you actually see? That's it. Nothing else. Opinions have n- have nothing to do with law. This is just political play. So beyond his opinions, he had few new facts to offer in his his, uh, testimony. Just opinions. That has nothing to do with law. Whatever the president says, because he is the president of the United States, he sets the agenda for foreign policy, not Mr. Vidman. And that's his problem. He gave his opinion, and then everybody else that want to listen to him of his opinions. And now you're in Congress in an impeachment trial or hearing, and he's expressing his opinions again. We don't care about his opinions. What was illegal in this process? That's what we want to know. And so opinions does not lead to an illegal process. 
The president has the right to set his agenda on foreign policy, not his advisors, not his secretary of state, not his anyone. It is the president who tells these people, this is my foreign policy, now we need to execute it. You can express your opinions to the president, but you don't go against them. You're military persons. That's what he was. He was a colonel. So he has to follow his commander-in-chief. Not to go out to Congress and express his opinions because he didn't like what his boss was telling him. So it's a mess. It really, really, truly is a mess. So I want you to take, during this week, if you're going to listen to these hearings, I want you to keep one thing in the back of your mind, okay? There's going to be a lot of cross-examinations. There's going to be a lot of name-calling. and this, this is going to be a whole show. It's going to be the Kavanaugh show of impeachment. You saw how Kavanaugh was, was treated in his, in his uh, confirmation. All of these people came out of the woodwork. All of a sudden, they came out of the woodwork. And everybody wanted to listen to them. But when they were cross-examined... They failed miserably. So this is what this whole week is going to be about. It's going to be about showmanship and who can sh- up show everybody else. And all of these sneaky things that will come out. Keep that in mind as you're watching this. And then I also want you to think, okay, in two weeks, within the next two weeks, we have an Inspector General's report that comes to the conclusion of what happened, how everything started. Now, the Democrats are very afraid of this because it's always already this rumble in the jungle of Washington, D.C. that this Inspector General report has some criminal referrals to the Department of Justice on a lot of different people, which will shoot holes in the Democrats' impeachment process. Now, all of you who are Anti-Trump, I want you to remember this. There is an Inspector General report coming out, and it is going to be not so good. I'm not going to say it's going to be devastating, because I never know about these things. I'm getting tired of reading these reports, to tell you the truth, because it never goes anywhere. But the rumor and the rumble is that this criminal referral is coming that has to do with Ukraine, has to do with the Clinton era, has to do with the FBI, has to do with people in the Department of Justice. So we're going to have to watch that very carefully because that will turn the tide depending on what it says. So before you get all caught up and so anti-Trump this week within these congressional hearings, remember... There's a long-awaited Inspector General report that will probably destroy a lot of different aspects of this impeachment trial. But they're going to try this whole week to make Trump look as bad as he possibly can. That's going to happen. It's going to be this whole show. We're going to go through this Kavanaugh hearing once again, but this time it's going to be about impeachment. And we're going to hear about all of these people that want to come forward and talk. It's, it's the showmanship that is so foolish because American people see it and they say, what in the world are these people doing? What in the world are they doing? So I, I want you to keep those things in the back of your mind. One, they have witnesses that their testimony are going to be cross-examined and they're already, already weak because they're giving opinion. Opinion is not a factor in law, okay? Opinion is not that. It has to be, it has to be focused on the Constitution and what the rights of the president is as the executive of this United States. And he sets the, the foreign agenda, the foreign affairs agenda. And then we have the Inspector General report that's coming out, and we are going to have... A lot more, I think, good articles like this one that came out of the San Francisco Chronicle, but will be coming out from other sources. 
So where is this going to get us? Well, it's really not going to get us anywhere. It's just a political show. That's all it is. And it's a corrupt political show because they're trying to do as much damage as they possibly can. The political elite are so unhappy with what Trump has done. He has proven them wrong on so many different areas. And he's gone his own way. He's been his own man and he's gone his own way. And they hate that. Because now they have no power over what the president thinks or does. Because the president is very independent. And they're not used to that type of leadership. In business, that's how we lead. We lead by our independence. We take advice from various people, but it always comes back to our judgment as leaders, as executives. And that's what Trump is used to. And so the political elite do not like that because they don't understand how things get done. They know how to talk about things, but they don't understand the process that it takes to get things done. And I think that's where we have a problem is that we have politicians who have become so, so, uh, uh, so, uh, what do I want to say? They, they've become so accustomed to having their own way and living a certain way within their political power that when somebody comes along that has different ideas and different approaches, they go ballistic. They go crazy. We see that in business too. When you take over a company, when you do emergent acquisition, sometimes you have individuals who are so pissed off because of what the new company is coming in and doing. And then they start going backtrack and they start undercutting people and they start gossiping. And It happens in business also. When another CEO takes over another company, we see this happen a lot. That's why they always try to send... I've been on so many advanced teams when there's been a merger and acquisition. I think the, the 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 one that I remember the most is uh, a smaller company buying a larger company, and so the larger company felt threatened with this little tiny company coming and taking them over and having to adhere to the rules and policies of this smaller company because this bigger company thought they knew best, they knew how to do everything the best. Unfortunately. The smaller company is the one that bought them out. <laughs> they are the bosses. So it doesn't matter what the bigger company thought that they were the best and the brightest and they knew everything about that form of business. It doesn't matter. It has to do with the people who are purchasing that company and taking them over. Things change. I think Congress should probably read the book move the cheese or whatever it is that talks about change. Change happens. In business, it happens. Listen, when we, when my client, the smaller company who took the bigger company in this merger acquisition, there were a lot of rumblings. And there were 75 offices worldwide. So I remember they put me on a plane and I began going from country to country talking to all of the people and trying to get them on board. We had people leave. We had people leave because they were threatened. They were threatened of what was going to happen. They didn't like it, so they left. It happens in the corporate world and now we see it happening in the political world where politicians do not like the new president in the way that he manages the way that he leads unfortunately these people in politics have become dirty rotten scoundrels and that's where we sit today we sit in this situation where the elite want to be in control again and it's just an evil process that we have to go through this and um, um, not immigration but um this impeachment hearings and process just because people don't like what the other what the president said or how he does things you guys i tell you in politics you have got to wise up here things change people change leadership mannerisms change so far everything that trump has done that the left has gone against him about 
has helped. He has helped. Think about where we were at Korea. When he took office, we were just about ready to bomb North Korea. Today we have talks going on. We, we don't have any threats at the moment. There's no bombs heading towards Japan anymore. People seem to forget these, these things. And the media was all in an uproar of what he said and everything, how he did it. But you know what? We have peace. We're sitting here with a small country who knows that they can't do anything because Trump carries a big stick. And the United States is strong once again. So I really want you to think about these things as you are listening to these hearings this week. Is it fair and is it balanced? And are they following the Constitution or are they following political law? Political law has nothing to do with the Constitution. So as you listen, as you watch, as you read about, examine the words, analyze the words. It's going to be a tough week, so everybody get prepared. We're going to hear about this all week long and whenever we get done with this impeachment stuff. But it's really, it's, it's really tiring. I tell you, I'm exhausted from it. I'm literally tired and exhausted from it. I wanted to talk about California just a little bit. Listen, Gavin Newsom is again costing Californians a lot of money. He just set up, he signed a what is called the Wildlife Liability Bill, where utility customers are to pay $10.5 billion into a new fund. Now, this is going to pass through their their electrical bills and everything because you know once a fund has to set up someone's got to pay for it and so now Californians are going to have to pay for this new fund and I'm afraid I'm, I'm going to tell you this right now that fund is going to be robbed because that's billions of dollars and any time that a socialist democratic state knows that and they smell the money just about ready to come in. It's going to be diverted to other things. Happened with the gasoline tax. It's happening right now with the gasoline tax in California. So I really want you to pay attention to that also. California is, is, is really out of control. You've got so many people leaving the state. They're exodus. The, the middle class is leaving because they can no longer afford the taxation there. They can no longer afford the high cost of gasoline. They can no longer afford the high cost of, of buying a home. The average home price now in California is 600000 $600,000. There's nothing affordable there. Even to rent a place, I mean, I was looking when I was had my office in Burbank. I needed to have temporary space for the uh, tax season, which my tax season lasts about six months in California. Or it used to last six months in California. So I was looking for a place. So in Glendale, California, 300 square foot studio, $1,800 for 300 square foot. In Florida, you can get a 2,000 square foot for $1,800. <laughs> so you see there's a huge off-balance situation in California. I love California because I was born there. And California is my home state. And I have to tell you this. I am a California refugee that had to go to another state, and I chose Florida. No state tax here. I was really, really impressed with the state of Texas the other day where they passed a law where they would never have a state tax. So you understand why Californians are leaving to Texas and they're leaving to Arizona and they're leaving to Florida and they're leaving to the state of Washington because they are non-taxable states. Yes, they have property taxes. They have... Sales and use taxes, but they have no personal income taxes. So, 
Californians look around, just as I did, and said, okay, where am I going to go? Where am I going to go where it's, where it's a, a business-friendly state? I chose Florida. Other people have chosen other states. So when you see things like this happening, where Newsom is signing these fake fake bills that is just a money-making machine for the state for them to use for other things, you begin to wonder exactly how long will California last? If people keep leaving, how long will it last? There are more people leaving the state of California than there are going in. And most of the people going in are lower-income individuals. They're no longer professionals. They're no longer executives. They are the, the minimum wage, the lower-level income-producing people. Or wage-producing people, I should say. So if you really want to take a look at all of this, you have to have an open mind. And you have to ask the key question is, what is good for my state? What is good for my country? Impeachment certainly is not good because it divides the country. It makes everybody hate each other. High taxation is bad because it forces people out of the state. You've got a city attorney up in San Francisco who is now saying, I'm not going to enforce the laws of, of, of the smaller crimes. San Francisco crime rates go up. They have over the last couple of years. They've gone up because they've adopted the, the, they have adopted the non, the, the, they've adopted the sanctuary city mentality. Of the laws go out the door, but the illegal activity goes up. So you have to ask this question, what is good for America? What is good for my community? And then if you find individuals who are endorsing the bad aspects of the state or of the federal government, you got to boot them out before they do more damage. So we have a lot to listen to this week. Listen to it with an open mind. Consider both sides and then make your conclusions. But don't go off the spin. Don't do that. Don't go off the spin. Listen to the actual testimony and the words being used. And use some common sense as you listen to it. Not political. If you're a Democrat, put it to the side. If you're a Republican, put it to the side. If you're in the if you're an independent, put both to the side. <laughs> I'm an independent, so I'm putting both to the side and only focusing on the words being said by the witness. It's the same thing when you're in court. You listen to what is being said by the witness. And if that witness is not telling a truthful or a convincing enough story. You mark them off and say, I don't believe them. Or, I believe them. Listen very carefully. Words mean everything. And you've got to make sure that as an American, we choose right over wrong. We, use, we choose common sense over political nonsense. So that's my political Tuesday. If you have any, if you have any comments or questions, send me a text at eight one eight two five two five six eight two eight one eight two five two five six eight two, and I promise you, I'll give you a response back. I always do. Talk with you soon, everybody. Political Tuesday's over for me. On to business. On to the fun stuff. Talk with you soon. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to the WBT with Michael Lodge. Join us again tomorrow as we explore more about business and taxes. Follow us on iHeartRadio and go to our podcast website at www.wbtpod.com. 
and listen to all of our podcasts and read our blogs. This podcast is produced by Michael Lodge, fully focused on content.